On our last show, we talked to Todd Batty, the creative director of EA Sports' latest edition of SSX, their super rad snowboarding game. Now we want to see you shred. Post a video response of your best SSX run and we'll feature it on Network A. Don't forget your squirrel suit. At Dose, we don't need Black History Month to remind us that black athletes are rad. But since it's February, we thought it would make sense to take a look into our collective history and talk about some of the people who were way ahead of their time. We're fortunate enough to live in a world where black athletes make up some of the best talent in the game. People like Nigel Houston, Nigel Sylvester, James Stewart, and Stevie Bell are setting the bar for NAR totally regardless of color. But it wasn't always like that. In its infancy, action sports lack diversity almost as much as other parts of society. Until guys like skateboarder Rodney Smith, the founder of both Shut and Zoo York Skateboards, came around and changed the game. The group of kids that I started skating with were your average suburban white kids. And I was the oddball, being the one of the only black kids in my neighborhood that skateboarded. I never made it a point to focus on what any negativity, if there was any. I dressed the way I wanted, I skated where I wanted, I skated with who I wanted. My parents were completely confused. They're like, what the hell are you doing with this? A skateboarding? Oh, black kids skateboard, what are you talking about? It's like, now you weren't checking shoes? It was just progressed from there. It just got crazier and crazier. My first visuals of skaters of color was Skateboarder Magazine. I think the first pro skater I saw was uh, Ray Bones Rodriguez, who rode for Pal. I saw an ad with him. And I was blown away because he had dark skin. I was like, holy shit, what's this, what's this kid doing? Like, this is making it cool for me. I was really excited to see that and knowing that there, were, you know, there weren't too many boundaries keeping people of color out of skateboarding. So I just kept striving forward and forward and going for it. You know? Snowboarder Keir Dillon had a huge influence on modern snowboarding with his buttery half-pipe style. Now, the elder statesman for the Friends crew also holds down on-camera duties at the X Games alongside co-host Sal Masekela. I remember uh, Valley Nevada. It was like my first real legit uh, Burton photo shoot. One of the girls on the team came up to me and she's like, yo, man, you're actually pretty good. You're not just like some marketing ploy. Like, you actually have some skills. Kind of a compliment, but it definitely, uh, definitely threw me off. It was something I never tripped on, you know, the whole being black and, and snowboarding. To me, I was just oblivious. I wasn't, I wasn't raised in that way that it was like a big deal. I was just out there shredding. I was out there doing like every other kid was doing, trying to, trying to be different, trying to express myself through snowboarding. It was never a race thing for me. It, was, it truly wasn't. It was just showing up, competing, expressing yourself you know, battling and enjoying it, you know, like the whole culture of it. That's what sucked me in and in that whole level playing field, I think, is is what inspired me to devote my life to it. Being, quote unquote, like the face action sports with Sal Masekela, it's pretty dope. You know, you're sitting at X Games, Sal and I in the booth, and we always hit it up like, yo, it's Black History Month. And, you know, you got the whitest sport there is. And you got two black people in there calling it and, and telling it. And I don't know, it's, it's a huge privilege. I don't feel like I did anything. I feel like there's so many people, black, white, whatever color, that they really did the heavy lifting to, to get snowboarding to where it is now. I'm just so blessed to, to be a part of this, to have tried to do some fun things, and I'm just excited about the future. Nick Gabaldon was a black surfer in the 1940s who passed away before his prime doing exactly what he loved, surfing. He's also the subject of a recent documentary by Nike entitled 12 Miles North, directed by Richard Yelland. I had a chance to speak with Richard recently to learn more about Nick's story. Hi Richard, welcome to DOS. Tell me, how did you come across this story? Nick Gabaldon's story was brought to my attention by the team at Nike. I was captivated and began this almost seemingly impossible mission of digging up photos and information on him because not much existed. What is Nick's story, if you could sort of just paraphrase it? Nick's story starts with just having a passion inside yourself and not seeing any boundaries. Even though on land he wasn't seen as an equal, but in the water, Nick as a human was this kind of idolized character in the water and he was respected among all surfers that pioneered the sport. What do you hope people will take away from this film? When you look at the story purely as Nick's story, it's beyond race. And I think that that's sort of where I think we as a society and a community need to, to go. The most powerful part of this film is, is people 
recounting a, a, a day 60 years ago when this happened. Maybe they didn't have an opportunity culturally to tell his story. Maybe it wasn't appropriate. Maybe it's time that we're all ready to, to hear Nick's story. Richard, thank you so much for joining us on Dose. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks for watching Dose. If you haven't yet, hit subscribe, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and share this video with all your friends. Sharing is caring. Finally, leave me a comment below. I actually do read them. I'm Tim Brodhagen, and I'm out.